Hello and welcome to Weirdos in the Wild with our co-host, A.J. Oxley, paranormal investigator with Beyond This Life Paranormal and multi-generational paranormal enthusiast, and Lynn Tincher, Beyond This Life paranormal investigator, Reiki master, published author, and near-death experiencer. Travel with them, a couple of everyday weirdos, on a wild ride to all things paranormal and metaphysical. Coming up on Weirdos in the Wild, AJ and Lynn sit down with fellow Beyond This Life paranormal investigator, Melissa Steyer to talk about her life story and how she developed her psychic abilities to further her desire to help others using Reiki energy to cleanse homes, property, and people from haunted negative energies and spiritual attachments. You don't want to miss this. Just who are the weirdos in the wild, you ask? Two everyday weirdos from Kentucky that wanted to start a paranormal and metaphysical podcast, of course. Join A.J. Oxley and Lynn Tincher, paranormal investigators with Beyond This Life, as they take their iPhones on the road to haunted locations to investigate or on trips to talk to the movers and shakers of the paranormal and metaphysical community. Subscribe to their podcast, Weirdos in the Wild, at your favorite podcast location. Welcome back, everyone. This is AJ, Weirdos in the Wild, with my other weirdo friend here. Hi, it's Lynn. And uh, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about... um, Reiki. We're going to talk about cleansing of houses. And we're also going to talk some about our group, our ghost hunting group, Beyond This Life, because we have a very special guest from our group. Yes, we're we're very excited to welcome Melissa Steyer. Um, We may call her Missy, (laughs) because that's what we call her usually in the group. But she was actually with Beyond This Life before AJ and I were get to talk to Missy. She's got a wonderful story. Um, her life story is pretty incredible. Um, she's getting to the point now that she's, you know, really dedicating her life to helping others that's been in similar situations to what she has been through. So it's going to be a really interesting show to sit back and listen to what all she has to offer. Yes. And always, as we say, if you've got a story you want to share with us, please reach out to us. Go to weirdosinthewild.com. Go to our TikTok, our Facebook, Facebook, our Instagram. I don't know what else we got. We got all of them. <laughs> but if you want to reach out to us, please do. We would love to hear your stories. And um, you could also possibly be a guest on our show. So please, uh, t- we're going to take a minute here for some of our sponsors. And we're going to be right back. And we're going to talk to Missy. Hydra Publications is your one-stop shop for genre fiction including those from horror master Michael West, starting with Poseidon's Children, The Legacy of the Gods, Book One. Man no longer worships the old gods, forgotten and forsaken. They become nothing more than myth and legend. But all that is about to change after the ruins of a vast ancient civilization are discovered on the ocean floor. Coast Guard officers find a series of derelict ships drifting in the current, high-priced yachts and leaking fishing boats, all ransacked and splattered with blood. Their crew is missing and presumed dead, and that's just the beginning. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of energetic healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about energetic healing and how to contact us, Visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit. Welcome back, everyone. We are sitting down with Melissa Steyer from our Beyond This Life Paranormal Group. Um, She's one of our resident psychics as well as a Reiki master, and she has some pretty incredible experiences that got her to the point she is today and excited to have met her and she's now become my sister I think <laughs> so, <laughs> but we she's have become a, a very cool. tight group of our yes. ghost hunters have as we want to call ourselves Missy is one of our investigators we've learned I've learned a lot from her and yes. I learned a lot more um, every time we hunt together so 
Welcome, Missy. Thank you for having me. Let's get started by just, I guess, give a little bit of your life story. What got you kicked off going down this path? Looking back when I was a child, I remember some incidents that happened in the houses that I lived in. Um, but back then, you really didn't, you know, like talk about that there, your house could be haunted. Um, so it really wasn't brought to my attention until later years. But as a, um, as a young child, probably around seven, in a house I lived in, I remember walking down some stairs and seeing a shadow. I also recall at that young age of the hallway that we had that led to the bedrooms. At the end of the hallway was, it was just a mirrored wall. And I always felt like there was something behind that wall, but I never, you know, knew what or had any other experiences that I recall. And we then left that house when I was 12 and moved to another house I think had more activity in it than what any of us really realized at the time. The main thing that kind of got us is when we moved in, the house had an odor in one of the bedrooms, which ended up being my bedroom, that on the wall, we just couldn't get rid of this odor, no matter what we did, how we painted, couldn't get rid of the odor. That was one of the things. Uh, Another thing is you would be watching TV or playing on the Commodore 64, (laughs) <laughs> Tells you how old I am. I had that too. So, <laughs> um, and you felt like somebody's watching you, you know, while you're on in the computer room. Uh, other than that, like we really didn't have much activity. But my father and I would argue um, a great deal. You know, of course, you know you, you're a teenager, so you know you're like, well, it's a teenager thing. You know, I'm trying to be equal with my parents, and so going to therapy. You know, because that's what they thought was best and therapy says, well, I think you might need to go to be put into one of those um, hospitals that, you know, kind of evaluate you and this and that. And so, you know, my parents thinking that they're doing the right thing for me and helping me, they put me in there. I was in there for about nine months. And then during that time, I realized I don't belong here. This isn't, Mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing going on with me now. Like nothing happened when I was there. I wasn't having any kind of outburst or anything like that. So it was just odd that, you know, I'm trying to understand why I'm here. And finally, I was able to come back home. Um, Stuff still probably happened after that. I remember one incident where I had an argument with my father in the kitchen. And the next thing I know, I'm passed out on the ground. And my body is rising above me. And I'm looking down and and I see my body there. And the first thought was if I'm naked or not, which at the time, <laughs> you know, being a teenager, you're like, ah, and so I, I, it's like going to class naked, right? <laughs> so, um, I, I hurried up and went back into my body and came back, but not ever realizing or knowing what was the cause of all this different things that was going on. Uh, after I was 17, we moved out of that house. And we moved to another state, and at that point, nothing happened. Like, I was a normal child. There was no outburst or or anything between me and my father again. It was just normal. So when you, when you had, you had a different feeling when you were in the house versus when you were in the hospital versus when you were in the house. Yes. Versus when you, you moved. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the only time that anything happened was in that house. Okay. So as I got older, um, I'd always been into the psychic world, like always interested in it, but never, not realizing that, um, why I was into it. So in my twenties, when I did move back to Louisville, I ended up getting in hold of a, a, a psychic that's local in Louisville and I did psychic parties. And in my session with the psychic, you know, I would, you know, get insight and stuff and and my, of my future or what I'm going through and, and different things. And I always just was so into it, but I never understood, you know, like why, what, what it was about me that was so into it that no one else sees. Like I wasn't getting that confirmation of yes, this is real or yes, this is you, you have the ability so it wasn't until 
uh, probably in my late 20s, I'm going to say probably 26, that the psychic that I was seeing, I had shown her a picture of me at the age of 14 at the table in the old house that I lived in and I, with a birthday cake in front of me. So it's my birthday. And so the lady looks at the picture and she says, there's a guy attached to you that's standing behind you. And I'm like, what do you mean attached to me? She's like, well, he's he's attached to you. Like he... Did she pe- point it out visually to you or she saw that as part of being a psychic? She saw that as being a psychic looking at the picture. Okay. That she could see the entity behind me. Okay. And as she talked, the dots started connecting. And I was like... Okay, so then I understood that a ghost could jump a a human being. And there's different types of jumping. There's jumping where you can jump in. A ghost can jump in a body and not stay long and jump back out. But then there's also times where an entity can get so attached to that person that they end up becoming that person and taking over. Kind of like melding with with the soul of the person so yes. to speak. Hmm. But in this incident it was just jumping. And it was a male figure that he would jump me and then she could see the um hostility, the chaos that he liked to create in my household. So learning all this in my 20s and connecting the dots and realizing what happened to me as a child and realizing that when I did go to that hospital for those months and feeling that I don't belong, I really didn't belong because what was happening was happening in the house. And it wasn't me. It was whatever was jumping mm-hmm. me. So Causing that chaos yeah. between you and Causing your family. It. Influencing you. Yeah. Yes. So with that knowledge, um, you know, I was able to, I guess, release a lot of the pent-up anger I guess I had from what what I went through as a teenager um feeling like you know I, there was something wrong with me and really there wasn't something wrong with me so as I grew as I got older you know I looked into a lot of different books read a lot of things about psychics um trying to get more knowledge about what what I went through how other people are going through the same thing uh, it wasn't until probably 2018 that I met another uh, psychic individual who agreed to mentor me and help me understand things that I've always felt but didn't really know or have that confirmation. Um, so she was able to guide me and open up the doors and, and explain to me that everyone is psychic. It's just you're psychic in different ways. A lot of people close the psychic ability mm-hmm. off because that's how they're brought up. That, you know, it's not the way to be, but you always have it. Your gut feeling, your intuition, all of that is your psychic ability. Right. It's not your imagination. No. Oh, yeah. and, and it's your soul talking to you. Mm-hmm. So that's why you should always listen to it. Or if you say, well, I shouldn't do this, but you do it anyway. And you're like, man, I knew I shouldn't have done it. You know, that's your soul telling you don't do this. Or if you go into some place and you don't feel that you should be there, that's your soul telling you to get out. So right. just always listen to it. Um, so as I ended up mentoring with this girl and learning about different people like me and meeting with people like me, it really allowed me to open up. And to see what's out there and exactly who I am as a person. And so I've done, you know, I've worked with the tarot cards and I've worked with the mediumship. And it wasn't until I was introduced to Reiki. Reiki energy healing, I was introduced to. And I went for my first Reiki massage. And I will tell you that the experience that I had was just mind-blowing and just opened up everything Mm -hmm. for me to show me who I am and what I'm here to be able to do for people and to help people because I'm a healer. 
So my first Reiki session during it, at one point, I did actually see my soul up in the sky doing somersaults, just saying, thank you, thank you, thank (laughs) you. And that was just the most, the best experience I could, I could ask for. So maybe at this point, tell tell a little bit about um, what Reiki actually is, because I'm sure there's some people out there that, that and what a don't Reiki know. massage is, because I don't know what it is. It, it's not really truly a massage, but... right? I so say, I mean, Reiki, maybe I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Reiki is a Japanese technique uh, that Doctor Yusus started in 1920. A long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> Um, that it is where you are able to get the life force energy that is all around us and have it conducted into your body to wipe out anything negative or doesn't serve you that you don't need and put in positive energy. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like cleansing your body in a way that you're cleansing your soul, your, your cells, your organs, you're cleansing all of that and making your chakras cleaned out so the energy flows freely. With a massage, you're going to lay on a massage table and the the Reiki master or practitioner uh, will then be the conductor th- from the universal life force energy mm-hmm. through her, through the person into the client on the table. It's a channel. The practitioner or Reiki master will then just send the energy by laying their hands on the client or if the client does not prefer the hands being laid on them to at a distance. Reiki can be done, uh, you know, doesn't have to be touched. It can be without being touched. Uh, Reiki universe force energy is so available that you can do it from across the room to across the country Mm -hmm. you do have to be attuned to the reiki energy to be able to do this and that is where anyone can learn this process by just contacting a reiki master that is teaching it and you don't need any special abilities to be able to do this but it also can open up other abilities once you open up the reiki can open up other abilities that you do have and enhance them So that gets us back to where you just had your first experience. Yes. So at that point, I knew that Reiki was where I was supposed to be. And so at that point, I started to, uh, I found a lady that taught Reiki. I learned Yusui Reiki. I became a master of Yusui Reiki. Then in co- during COVID, I learned about Holy Fire Reiki, and I became a practitioner and a master during the COVID uh, time of being at home uh, online on learning that Holy Fire Reiki. Holy Fire Reiki is just like a different frequency of Reiki, so it's, it's just a different level of frequency. So with the Holy Fire Reiki, I also learned that there's the ability to cleanse homes with this. So with knowing that, I was definitely finding myself that I had to become a holy master of holy fire Reiki so that I could cleanse homes and help people and cord cutting with people as well. Because people can have attachments and not know it, or they can move into a new home and it feel like there's something there. I could come in and cleanse your new home or cleanse the home you already are in and to make it feel like just love and happiness and just harmony, like a home should feel and not. So when you say cord cutting, do you mean like the entity that you had in your home when you were mm-hmm. growing up? If the entity had stayed in me or stayed attached to me, but it didn't. Okay. In that sense, it didn't. Okay. Like when I left the home, it stayed. But there are some entities that will attach to a person and follow them. Okay. Um, we can, you know, during a Reiki session, you can feel attachments. We would then do a cord cutting on that individual as well as if their home needs it too. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. <clears throat> um, okay. So 
with... So you're talking about you can come into somebody's home that they've... A new home, their existing home. If, and you were talking about if there's... You know, you just don't... You don't feel comfortable. Um, you know, we have the saying here on our podcast... If you know, you know. <laughs> exactly. You know the feeling. You had to get that one in another I, you know, I have. It's been like two. It's been like two since yeah. I've been able to put it out there. That's, that's going to be on a t-shirt this week, too. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> exactly. That's what we say if, here. If you know, yeah. you know. Because you have that. You, you do. You know that feeling. You have that intuition. Yes. That we your, all know that That is feel. your psychic yeah. We feeling. all know that feeling. When we <laughs> yeah. walk into, uh, you know, when we are investigating a place we all know that feeling and it's it's pretty amazing that all of us can look at each other and read each other's faces and we're like oh crap there's something here you know <laughs> or you know we're looking at each other like where is it you know the, the, we've had both experiences so just know that there is help out here that if you do have a home that you feel like might have an entity or just negative energy energy alone can just be nasty mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be an actual entity or ghost or whatever you want to call it in your home there's you know residual energy where it's just staying there and we can get rid of that as well um if you have a child who is having nightmares or you know just says that they're they've got a imaginary friend i promise you it's not an imaginary friend there Mm -hmm. is something there we can, you know, investigate that to make sure that that entity is something that's not going to harm your child or do anything that's not good. Um, we would do an investigation and then, you know, go from what we find and, and decide, is this what we want to do and cleanse. Now, I want you all to understand that if I cleanse a home, if you have a loved one that's passed over and is coming back to visit from heaven, that individual is not going to be cleansed away from your home because that's a good, positive positive Mm -hmm. energy. So I'm not getting rid of positive energies that are from heaven. I'm getting rid of stuff that's earthbound, that's causing issues within your own home (laughs) or within yourself. And that's So Grandpa is safe. Yes. (laughs) So, so kind of explain it then. You uh, just kind of the steps that you would go in. So, if somebody somebody said, "Hey, I think something's going on in my house, Missy," what would you do? Uh, explain the steps. All right, I definitely would ask some questions to the client, find out exactly what different things are that's happening to them. Kind of get an idea if there's a certain location of the house versus the whole house. Um, just fill them out. And then I would take the Beyond This Life team over and we would do an investigation to see if we can find out who it is. And validate that there's something there. And validate that there is something there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then at that point, we would talk with the client and then say, you know, this is what we gather. This This is the evidence that we have. This is what we feel. If you would like for us to, you know, for Mm -hmm. myself to cleanse the home, we would go from there. Or it may be... You know, we we didn't find anything. You're safe. You know, there might be something else going on. That there's not, you know, a negative influence yeah. here. And you've also talked about the property as well to us. Yes. A property <clears throat> is... My parents own 15 acres of land between Macville and Perryville. Perryville was a very... A battlefield the area. A battlefield area. During the Civil the War, right? Yes. So... When they bought this land, I, at one point, felt that there was soldiers in the tree lines. So, not only did I cleanse the house, I cleansed the land as well. So that there is a, I almost put up an imaginary fence line around your property. So that nothing else can come in uh, once we have cleansed to kind of block off anything. Like a boundary, yeah. At this point, we're going to take a break and hear from our sponsors. When we come back, we're going to hear some of, some more of Missy's stories. Hydra Publications is your one-stop shop for genre fiction, including those from horror master Michael West, starting with Poseidon's Children, The Legacy of the Gods, Book One, Man No Longer Worships the Old Gods, Forgotten and Forsaken, 
they become nothing more than myth and legend. But all that is about to change after the ruins of a vast ancient civilization are discovered on the ocean floor. Coast Guard officers find a series of derelict ships drifting in the current, high-priced yachts and leaking fishing boats, all ransacked and splattered with blood. Their crew is missing and presumed dead, and that's just the beginning. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about energetic healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit. Welcome back to Weirdos in the Wild. Before we return to our program, AJ and I would like to take a moment to remember my brother John Tencher, co-founder of Beyond This Life Paranormal, and Alan Oxley, AJ's father. Both passed away just before we recorded our first episode. Each and every episode going forward from this one on will be in remembrance of them. Thank you. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, We're going to continue on with our conversation with Missy. Um, Missy, why don't you tell us about some of the actual cleansings that you've done, you know, leave out names and locations, but, you know, you know kind of walk us into some of those. Sure. So back in 2019, I was going to a friend's son's house. As we were driving there, I kind of felt ill, but I didn't put, you know, two and two together at the time. Once we got there and we walked into the house I got extremely ill. and like physically sick? Oh, yes. It was bad. It was stomach, just nausea. It was, it was just really sick. But back then, I wasn't that familiar with what was going on. So I didn't really put two and two together. So as we were walking around the house and they wanted to show me their iguana, I'm standing there and I literally said, get me out of this house. Wow. And I was going to faint. Like, I could just feel myself getting ready to hit the, yeah, get ready to pass out and hit the ground. <clears throat> so I got out of that house as quick as I could. While I was outside, um, again, still, I wasn't sure what was going on. And I kind of was, like, calming down outside, you know, this and that. Well, then we ended up leaving so you're thinking I'm just getting sick. I'm yeah. getting the flu, something Something physically, right? was just physically just happening all of a sudden. So as we were driving away, and it took probably about 15 minutes away from the house before I started to feel better. So as we were driving down the highway, I looked over and I said, have you ever been someplace that just made you feel icky? And he looks over at me and he says, you mean my son's house we were just at? Wow. And at that moment, it clicked. And I realized that whatever was in that house was not good. And it definitely saw my ability because it attacked me right away. So at that point, I By knew... By attacking you, I mean, you meant that, made, that was what made you sick. That's what made me sick. Like, it knew that I was there. It was, you know, making itself known. And knowing that his son has... Four little children under the age of five. I knew that I had to do something. And all night long, I was worried. I'm like, you know, what do I I need to do? And at this point, I didn't have Holy Fire Reiki Master yet. So I still wasn't where I needed to be. So I made sure and went ahead and got my Master for Holy Fire so that I would be able to have the knowledge that I needed to help them. So it was about Thanksgiving, and, and we all went out there. Everybody was outside, you know, enjoying the weather, and I was inside cleansing the house. And as I walked around, I really didn't feel anything at first. But when I got to this one bedroom, something said, open the closet door. 
So I opened the closet door and I just sent so much Reiki energy in that room and throughout the whole entire house that once I was done, I was able to stay in that house, have a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner along with everybody else. And everyone could feel the difference from walking, being outside while I was doing this to coming back in and feeling the difference of how the house felt. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm telling you, Reiki's this bomb. The come up with a nice word for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bomb. But yes, so that was one of my experiences. Another one I just did a few weeks ago, I helped somebody that had um, their bedroom. It was only in the bedroom that they felt that they, they would go in and be scared and rush back out. And so we, you know, again, did an investigation. You know, we definitely got some, you know, some hits on it. There is something there. And then at that point, I did what I do, and I did the Holy Fire Reiki and cleansed that room. And the the homeowners are able to now sleep in there, which they have not been able to do in a long time. Well, that's great. Yeah. Amazing what, what a little positive energy can do. <laughs> yes, get rid of the, what's in there and, and what negative energy and put positive energy in there. I have another uh, story with cleansing that was really mind-opening. I loved it. But when I was doing the cleansing for this, it was a two sisters and a mother. And they all lived together. And they said that there was something there that they couldn't even take showers without feeling like they're being watched. Ooh, so, crazy. like, <laughs> one sister would go in and the other sister would stay by the door. You know, that's how scared they were to even take a shower in their own oh, home. Wow. So, they had uh, contacted myself and John, the, font, the founder of Beyond This Life. And he and I had gone there and we started to cleanse and knowing, though, that I felt that one of the sisters did have an attachment, so I made sure that after I was done cleansing the house, that I sat everybody, including the other two sisters and the mother, uh, Reiki's not going to hurt you. Reiki won't harm you at all, so it's good for everyone. So I just made sure that we sat everybody around the table, and I cleansed and cord-cutted anything in, in anything and everything that I possibly could off of these into these clients just to make sure that there's nothing there and that they could live a happy life. While we were still down there and after I'd done all the cleansings with everybody, the one sister went upstairs and literally, while I was still there with the mother and the other sister, the sister's upstairs taking a shower. Oh. Uh. All by herself? All by herself. (laughs) Felt very comfortable. And um, so that was, you know, knowing that they felt comfortable right away was just made me feel good. Yeah. But that's an amazing feeling for you to be able to to do this to really help somebody. Especially when you didn't have that when you were going through. Exactly. And just to get the word out that, you know, there is help. You just... You know, need to uh, need to ask. Need to ask and find out that it's not going to be from, you know, not not that I'm saying therapy's not good, but there's just certain things that would be more for a Reiki practitioner to help you with mm-hmm. in dealing with this kind of entities or right. this kind of energy. Because each thing has its place. You know, therapy is good for things that aren't paranormal, and or it may even be able to help you deal with things that. You've experienced that a paranormal, but it's not going to take care of the take care of the paranormal because that's not what it does. So the two, I think, work really well hand in hand. And I think if one doesn't work, try the other. You know, because you don't always know exactly what's going on. Yes. So, Missy, if somebody feels like they want some help or need some help, how can they get a hold of you? They can reach out to Beyond This Life. Uh, you can also reach out to weirdos, weirdos in the wild. wild. <laughs> com. Uh, Beyond this life is btlpara.com. And also my my personal business is mysticblissreiki.com. 
Uh, I also, again, you will see that I do the Reiki sessions along with the cleansings uh, on that website. Great. Thank you. Yes. Again, you can reach Missy at mysticbliss.com, btlpara.com, weirdosinthewild.com, or at her email at mysticbliss20 at gmail.com, or find Mystic Bliss Reiki on facebook.com. Thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it. And Thank you for having me. And we've, Missy, we've, we'll be back with us again yeah. as we talk more about our our group beyond this life. And we do appreciate you sharing you know, such a personal story with, with the world now, not just with us. And, you know, I, I'm sure you'll reach somebody and be able to, you know, even just somebody hearing your message, it'll help, um, you know. If but you you're not alone and there is help. And people are talking about it more now than they used to. So you don't have to hold it inside. And you don't have to live with it for the rest of your life. Right. Just know that there is help. You just have to reach out to us. Right. Well, Lynn, take us home. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone, and keep it weird, y'all. Hydra Publications is your one-stop shop for genre fiction, including those from horror master Michael West, starting with Poseidon's Children, The Legacy of the Gods, Book One. Man no longer worships the old gods, forgotten and forsaken. They become nothing more than myth and legend. But all that is about to change after the ruins of a vast ancient civilization are discovered on the ocean floor. Coast Guard officers find a series of derelict ships drifting in the current, high price yachts and leaking fishing boats, all ransacked and splattered with blood, their crews missing and presumed dead, and that's just the beginning. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about energetic healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit. Thank you for joining us at Weirdos in the Wild. Please show us some love and support on our Patreon account at Weirdos in the Wild. Like us on all of our social media. And if you've had an experience you'd like to share with us, visit our site at weirdosinthewild.com. Until next time, keep it weird, y'all.